All right, for this week's modeling activity, we're going to focus on cities, actually, and uh, a couple of models about urban growth. Now, we haven't focused too much in this class on cities, um, but um, especially as we move into the, fo uh, into the future, cities are going to overwhelmingly be, it's, they're already overwhelmingly where the majority of the population of the Earth lives. And so there are a lot of issues about urban land use, urban sprawl, and things like urban heat island, et cetera, that are unique to cities as an anthropogenic feature. And modeling can help us understand some of that stuff. So I have here NetLogo 611 uh, open. The first model that we're going to play with actually comes packaged with NetLogo as an example model. So if we go to the File menu and we go to the Models Library, we can see a whole bunch of models that are actually packaged with NetLogo. Now there's a lot of models in here and feel free by all means to play around with as many of these as you want. You can see they sort of got them organized by sort of by discipline or application area. Um, but the one that I want you to play around with first is in the urban suite. So it's under curricular models, urban suite. And I want you to look for the one that says sprawl effect. Now you can play around with some of these other ones if you want, um, especially kind of an interesting one is Tijuana border towns. Uh, but I want you to start with the sprawl effect because it's pretty simple and I think easy to understand. So you just click, double click it, it will open up. It's, you know, a small window over here. And uh, just a quick note in the background, if you still are one of those folks who can't get NetLogo to run, um, you can actually click and run it in, on a website um, over here. It, it looks the same, it's just in the NetLogo web site over here. Um, but it will run a little bit faster if you run it in native NetLogo. So let's go ahead and do this. Again, the info are all here. Um, and it gives, you know, you want to read through all of this stuff to see exactly how this works. But basically the deal is you hit setup. You get this sort of landscape. There are cells that are a little bit more attractive for, you know, expansion of the city or, you know, for people building a suburb or something like that. And then uh, you have some parameters about how many people are there, uh, how attracted they are to each other, how attracted they are to these new places, how long they're going to wait before they go look for a new place to move, right? So you can play around with some of these sliders once you know what they are. Um, but basically the deal is that there's a bunch of households and they're moving around and then as they, uh, you know, do their behavior, this one's very explorative over here, um, they're making new neighborhoods and you can basically see the percentage of the land that's given over to being urbanized, right? And so this model, depending on people's, you know, desire to live off by themselves or to live next to other people or to live to people who are like them or not, um, and their frequency with which they look to move can help uh, us understand how cities grow and how they sprawl out to become these sort of megalopolises between um, different areas. So I want you to play around with this model just to, to understand how some of these different sliders can influence the way that uh, our you know, hypothetical city here is going to grow over time. So the next model I want you to uh, play around with, you can play around with the Tijuana Border Towns model if you'd like. It's a little f hard to set up, but I think it's there's if you read into it, you can figure it out. Um, but I particularly want you to uh, s play around with this uh, urban sandbox model because it is um, it's interactive, which is really, really cool. So let me just find where I have here, City Sandbox. And you can get to the net logo uh, file, and then it will open up. So this is pretty cool because it has different kinds of urban land use, residential, commercial, industrial, tourism, residential, commercial, commercial, industrial. These are by zoned areas and equipment. And the cool thing is that you can start off on just a blank canvas, or you can start off on a similar kind of landscape where um, if I hit set up here, you can see there's the black areas are, are attractive or at least places where you can build and the green areas are less attractive or places where it's not easy to build. And the cool thing is that you can just set the percentages 
of the different kinds of land use. So you can even look up a city, for example, and see how it's zoned and essentially put in the same percentages here. And then you can just let it do its thing. It'll sort of start off kind of randomly. And you'll start to see little agglomerations here or there, the yellow being residential. So if I let it go for, I don't know, 200 ticks or so, and I start to see where the agglomerations of, um, you know, habitations are, and I can pause it. Now I can draw on it. I can draw in roads, for example, um, to connect some of these centers of population. And there's one over here that's sort of lagging behind. And what we're going to do is connect these all with some roads. We're going to let a couple of them be without roads. And then we can continue the simulation and start to see how the pattern is influenced by the construction of this new highway. And you might see this development is now going to hug along the road. And some of these areas are going to have less um, you know, less development because the road has sort of left them behind. Um, you can also um, pick brushes for the different kinds of land use. So for example, you want to start off and say, this is an um, a urban core right over here, highly commercial district, like so. And then uncheck that. And then it has like a ring of um, suburban stuff all around it. And then over here is uh, the industrial area with mixed residential. So you see I have both of those two things checked over here. And what we're going to do is just hit the grow button and we'll just start to see how our initial sort of urban plan kind of looks. And if you're kind of clever with this, you can find maps of, you know, your city <laughs> you can kind of draw them in there if you want to get into it and then you can let it go over time if you have different plans you can kind of come up with how the city might grow over time based on the plan of you know the percentages of commercial residential industrial etc so this is really cool because this particular tool was meant to be interactive it was meant to let city planners and understand the impacts of zoning laws you know over time and they'll see exactly what the city might look like and you can really what's really cool about it is you can always pause it and let's say you want to connect across this barrier let's say this is a mountain you can draw a road that comes right up and across and then connects through this way and another road that kind of comes in like so and goes off that way and then you can continue and say, okay, they built their highway system. How does that affect, you know, the outcome? And I'd like you to play around with some of these things and then come up with a, just a brief experiment, maybe drawing the same kind of initial start patterns and then putting a road or not putting a road and seeing how it kind of changes the um, growth patterns of the city. So. That's basically all I wanted to do with this intro video is to just uh, sort of show you um, how to run some of these models and give you some ideas for the experiments. I don't need anything formal this time. I think this is more just a, an experience of playing around with uh, you know, cities in the simulation realm and trying to get a sense of how simulation modeling can help us understand urban context as well as the other things that we've been studying like farming and pastoralism and fire and erosion.